anybody can be here on drop of a dime. Something can happen in your life where the next thing you know, you can't pay your bills and you're here, you're homeless. Hello everybody, so here's kind of a more dynamic video about the housing crisis right now in the United States. I also live in Portland and I actually just dodged homelessness myself. And so a lot of the footage I'm going to be showing you is either me unpacking after I actually found a place, thank God, or I'm going to be showing you guys a lot of the footage of the homeless camps in Portland. Also, all my sources are in the description box of each video, specifically this one. Anyway, enjoy. All right, everybody, let's talk about some facts from the housing crisis. Now, in terms of the national percentage of people facing eviction, according to CNBC and based on the Census Bureau, the lowest percent of renters facing eviction is 22% in Vermont, so almost a quarter. The highest is up to 59% in West Virginia. Others include 51% in Florida and 55% in Mississippi. Holy Jesus. So over half the, the renting population. Now, one estimate states that 40 million Americans could be evicted during the pandemic. For perspective, in 2019, there were only 2.3 million evictions in comparison to the 40 million potential evictions. Now, one little touchy subject that a lot of white people don't want to talk about, but it's also important, is the issue of race. Now, this was actually first reported by Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk, so shout out to him. But half of white renters are highly confident that they will not get evicted. So that's half. In comparison, only 26% of African Americans can say the same. So when we're talking about the housing crisis, we're also talking about the issue with race and poverty and inequality as well. To personalize the issue of homelessness, let's talk about a city with one of the largest homeless populations, Portland, Oregon. And the story I want to talk about is the specific camp right outside of my apartment in North Portland. Now, there's approximately 70 to 80 people, and due to COVID, Portland City Hall agreed not to uproot their makeshift homes because it could lead to hundreds of more deaths. If they have to travel, their odds of contracting the virus skyrockets. The reason for this, out of many, is that 19% of the homeless population there are older than 55, 57% of men, and 67% of women are also disabled. Now, in terms of shelters, 4,015 people are quote-unquote sheltered, while 2,000 additional people are unsheltered. The real population is much higher as well due to the potential difficulties with gathering this type of information. Now, a story that's not unique to Portland, but rather instead it's more national, was an interesting study by an economist at Columbia University, which concluded that as a result of the pandemic, the homeless population in the United States could increase by 40 to 45 percent nationally. Now back to Portland, this would raise the population of homeless individuals from an estimated 6 thousand people to roughly 9,000 people. For perspective, if each person took up only a foot of space and followed the six foot social distancing rules, they would span over 10 miles. Hey, hello everybody. My name is Troyce Jordan and uh, I'm one of the people that live here on the cut uh, down in North Portland uh, in St. John's and uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, has affected my life by, you know, social distancing, uh, I can't get a job, can't go apply for a job. Most of us here I, I, are here because, of, you know, we just, something happened in our lives and it didn't turn out the way we had planned. Maybe some people got fired, uh, divorced, uh, couldn't pay their mortgage. Uh, anybody can be here on drop of a dime. Something can happen in your life where the next thing you know, you can't pay your bills and you're here, you're homeless. You know, uh, I look at people and they look at me like they're better than me or something. And, you know, we're all equal. Uh, don't look at the people that live here as bad people. They may have addiction problems. They may have mental health problems. Uh, something in their lives put them here and they're working on getting themselves out of here. Homelessness shouldn't end with homelessness. It should end with a home. We're all worried about getting getting sick. And the sweeps, you know, when the police come and sweep us, that is almost like a death sentence. People worry about, you know, they gotta pack up and move and, and who knows what can happen. Let us 
get ourselves out of here and work on getting ourselves the help that we need to better our lives. I'd just like to say this to, you know, the people of the state of Oregon. Uh, you know, all of us veterans that are homeless, regardless of what our problems are, whether it be alcoholism, drug addiction, divorce, uh, employment, uh, you know, we're human beings. I believe in the state of Oregon and the people in the state of Oregon are good people. And, and if they see us trying to help ourselves, well then I'm hoping the state of Oregon will help us in return. To tie this whole video together and to kind of conclude this, something I really want to mention to you guys is how the housing crisis is affecting the demonstration. So right now in Portland, there's been roughly 70 days of demonstrations where up to 2,000 people are occupying the very same parks that the homeless population is also sleeping in. So something that's very interesting that I would like to bring to light is the fact that 33% of renters in Oregon are on the verge of losing their homes and becoming homeless. 33% of renters in Portland is 75,000 people. Right now, the demonstrations are crazy with only 2,000 people. What happens when 75,000 up to, even if it's half, 30,000 roughly, or even less, say an additional 2,000 people who also are sleeping outside attend the protests? Imagine what kind of a situation we're going to be left in at that point in time. Interestingly enough, like I had already mentioned, Nationally, there could be up to 40 million people homeless. So there's a couple things that we need to do. Number one, we need to keep the rent freeze that is going on right now. Number two, we need to have a mass rent bailout program. Now, right now you might be thinking, well, hold on a second, you can't have a mass rent bailout that will cost too much money. Well, would you think the same thing if I were to tell you that over the last four years between tax cuts and bailouts we gave corporations over a trillion dollars. This isn't something that's debatable, and I'm sorry. This isn't something I'm trying to push onto you guys as, hey, this is something that I am saying and you guys have to listen. Whether I like it or not, this is the truth. We have to do this, or else we're going to become a failed state. And that is the harsh reality that we have to put up with at this very moment. And that is what I'm concerned with. So something else that you guys could do, aside from vote, please for God's sake vote, is share this information because not a lot of people know these realities right now. So in the description box below, if this is YouTube, I attach all my sources in the description box. In addition to that as well, I also attach captions with the information. So all you have to do is copy and paste it on your social media. So send it to your mom, send it to your dad, your grandma, your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, send it to your stalkers, send it to the people that will listen, send it to the people that won't listen, send it to everybody because we don't fully understand the breadth of obstacles that we are dealing with right now. We cannot work together to solve it. Thank you.